everyone. When we look at the ERP needs of the company, size is typically one of the most important factor. It can typically be segmented into four groups. In this video, we are going to be talking about the mid-size companies and their needs. So let's get to it. everyone, I'm Sam Gupta and principal at Elevate IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. We help our clients with ERP selection, ERP contract negotiation, ERP project recovery, and ERP implementation. So let's get into this topic and we are going to be discussing the needs of the mid-size companies. So before we get to the list, we are going to be looking at the criteria. So let's start with the definition of the mid-size companies. So these are going to be companies in the range of roughly 50 million to a billion dollar range. And in that uh, also, they can be segmented into two different groups. Number one group is going to be anywhere from 50 million to roughly 250 million dollar. And then there is going to be a permit segment which is going to be 250 to a billion dollar. And even inside the mid-size segment, these two companies are probably going to have very different needs. So typically these are the companies that could be present in up to four to 10 countries. And for them, the proper planning and scheduling is going to be critical for them to be able to scale to the next stage. Till this point, they might have survived with a very ad hoc planning and with the siloed systems, but now to grow from this point forward, they require far more standardization as well as integration of the processes, which is going to be super critical. They are not going to have as much implementation budget as the large companies, but they have at least some budget overall compared to the other segments, which are going to be either startups or small. So when we compile this list, we look at several other factors such as market share of the solutions in the mid segment. And then we look at the ownership, how cloud native the solution is going to be, whether their ecosystem is penetrated by the mid market companies. We look at the industry functionality, how diverse the solution is going to be. If you look at their acquisition strategy, if they are acquiring specific companies to fill their gaps for the mid segment. So these are some of the factors that we look at to compile this list. Now let's get to the list. So number 10 on our list is the solution called unit four. Unit four is the solution that is targeted towards the service centric organizations, people centric organizations, and these are the schools, universities, not for profit. So you are going to find a lot more functionality overall for the service centric organizations. It's not going to be as great fit for the other organizations. You are also going to find now uh, the other strength for uh, unit four is going to be this is probably the only solution that has the operational capabilities for schools and universities with the other solutions, you are either going to be integrating with a specialized solution or you are going to be building on top of your vanilla ERP. The weaknesses for unit four is going to be that they have very limited North American presence, even though they have been trying to penetrate and, and grab a lot of market share in the North American uh, territory as well. The other challenge with unit four is going to be, it's not going to be as diverse as solution. And again, if you have a business that is going to be slightly more service centric, but you might have a product centric arm, unit four might not be the best fit, or you might require two different ERP solutions. The other uh, cons for unit four is going to be the community overall is not as big as 
some of the other solutions on this list. But having said that, Unit 4 is a very strong mid-market solution, and that's why it ranks at number 10 on our list. Number 9 on our list is going to be a solution called Plax. Plax is targeted especially for the automotive uh, manufacturing and uh, the distribution companies. Uh, it is designed from the plant operator's perspective. It has far deeper industry 4.0 capabilities than the other solutions in the market. Some of the strengths for the mid-market companies uh, as far as Plax goes is going to be, number one, you are going to get the last mile functionality for the Toyota ecosystem. So you are not going to be spending as much on implementation in building this functionality. And then the other strength is going to be just that a plant floor perspective. So the plant floor employees and the shop floor employees will be able to relate with the solution a lot more. At the same time, the cons is going to be that it's going to be weak in the other areas, for example, procurement or the finance. So they will not be able to relate with the solution as much. It is also not going to be a diverse solution. And then the ecosystem is fairly limited overall. The ERP capabilities are going to be far limited as well. Having said that, Plex is still a very strong automotive ERP system for the mid-market companies. And that's the reason why it ranks at number nine on our list. <music> Now, number eight on our list is Apicor Kinetic. And Apicor Kinetic is targeted for the mid size manufacturing companies, and it's going to have far deeper mixed mode manufacturing capabilities compared to some of the other products on this list. The biggest strength that Apicor is going to have is it has far more advanced MES capability. So industry 4.0 capabilities are probably going to be similar to Plex. Plex might be deeper. Other pros that Apicor Kinetic is going to have is it's going to be slightly more cloud native than the other legacy products, such as if you compare this with Infor Cloud Suite Industrial, then the cloud native capabilities are going to be slightly richer because it's slightly ahead overall in the cloud game. It's ideal for tier one and tier two manufacturers and suppliers, especially for the companies that are going to be slightly more assembly centric. They might also have supply as their uh, distribution as part of their business model. Those are the companies that are going to like Apicor Kinetic a lot. The weakness for Apicor Kinetic is going to be overall data integrity issues with bombs. So it might not be the best fit for very complex manufacturing. It's going to have deeper capabilities than some of the other solutions, such as your Apicor Profit 21. But still, it's not going to be as deep as some of the other manufacturing solutions, such as in four cloud suite industrial. Now, it's really designed for assembly centric bombs. So the bombs are not going to be as natural for the manufacturers, the way they might be used to of seeing the bombs and especially the way they are going to be structured inside your CAT system. So Apicor Kinetic is not really designed for the complex manufacturing. And the other challenge that Apicor Kinetic has is the customer side and the vendor side quality resides in a third party quality system. They utilize a white labeled solution for their quality. So if you are a very quality centric organization, that could be a risk if they lose this relationship. Having said that, Apicor Kinetic is a very strong mid-market solution. And that's the reason why it ranks at number eight on our list. <music> Now, number seven on our list is going to be the solution called Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Uh, and Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central is targeted for project-centric, not-for-profit, FMCG, food and beverage distributors. It's not going to be as strong in manufacturing capabilities. For manufacturing, you are going to require a lot of add-ons. Sure, you have very large ecosystem overall for Microsoft Dynamics 365. For example, let's say if you are already on Microsoft Dynamics 365, then you can find a lot of options, but those are going to be add-ons. Microsoft is not responsible for those add-ons. Those are going to be third-party products. So you run into all of those risks 
that are going to be part of any of the third party solutions that you are going to be integrating with your core ERP solution. The other pros that we have with the Microsoft Dynamics 365 PC is going to be the technical flexibility, a slightly more flexible solution overall in terms of what it can allow for companies to be able to do, but it could be a pros and cons. The cons is going to be if your developers or the IT team try to over customize, then there might be maintenance issues, implementation failure issues. So again, that could serve both ways. The other pro for Business Central is going to be the cloud native. Uh, it has been completely re-architected for cloud and it has far deeper cloud native capabilities than some of the other solutions on this list. The cons for BC is going to be, it's typically slower in overall the way the product is designed. Sometimes it could be because of if you utilize too many add-ons, it could be perceived as very slow. But in general, the size of the product is small, even though it has very deep multi-entity capabilities. So it's not really designed for larger companies. And if the larger companies are going to try to utilize it, they might feel that the product overall is going to be slower. Will require add-ons and uh, uh, for manufacturing and construction companies. Uh, the product natively is not really designed for manufacturing and construction companies. They will be utilizing an add-on. So you need to keep that in mind. And then obviously it is going to have very limited last mile functionality for a specific industry vertical. So you are going to be building all of that. Having said that, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central is still a very strong product for mid-market companies. And that's the reason why it ranks at number seven on our list. <music>six on our list is going to be the product called Infor Cloud Suite Industrial. And Infor Cloud Suite Industrial is targeted for the SMB manufacturers, especially the companies that are going to require the mixed mode manufacturing for the complex manufacturing products. The design of Infor Cloud Suite Industrial is very OEM centric. So Epicor Kinetic is, is great for the tier one and tier two suppliers as well as manufacturers in four cloud suite industrial is not going to be as great fit if you are a distributor as well as manufacturer. In four cloud suite industrial is designed for pure play manufacturing. In four cloud suite industrial also has one of the strongest CPQ in the market. So if you are furniture manufacturer or any of the manufacturer where you require very deep configurable capabilities, whether your salespeople are configuring the product or you are exposing it to your customers. In both cases, uh, it's designed for very complex configurable products. And that's the strength of the Infor Cloud Suite Industrial. The other strength Infor Cloud Suite Industrial has is it's designed for quality centric organization. So if you have very uh, deep quality needs for the vendor side of the processes. For example, let's say if you are in the aerospace ecosystem, then you are probably going to be requiring the vendor side of very thick vendor side of quality processes to be able to rate these vendors to make sure that they are supplying the product that are allowed in your finished goods. So that's going to be the strength of the Infor Cloud Suite Industrial. Now let's look at some of the weaknesses. It's not really designed for the project centric manufacturing the overall WBS capabilities are going to be fairly limited. So if you are very project centric manufacturing and require engineer to order capabilities as well, Infor CSI is not the best fit. The interface is legacy. Overall, it might feel that it's harder to use. So that's another con that Infor CSI has. And Infor CSI is not going to be as diverse. Let's say if you are a company that does either project based manufacturing as well as ETO, Infor CSI may not be the best fit. If you are a distributor as well as manufacturer, again, Infor CSI might not be the best bet. Having said that, Infor CSI is still a very strong product for the mid market manufacturing companies, and that's why it ranks at number six on our list. Now, number five on our list is going to be the product called NetSuite. And NetSuite is ideal for the B2C commerce centric companies, that's where it has really deep capabilities. It's also a great fit for the tax as uh, not for profit companies because it has far deeper capabilities for those companies as well. 
So some of the strengths of NetSuite is going to be it has far bigger ecosystem overall in terms of the options that you can find in the NetSuite ecosystem. But that could be a con as well, because now you need to figure out how to navigate and which add-ons are going to be the one that will have the quality support and the quality code that is not going to give you trouble with respect to your, your implementation. So while the ecosystem is great, it's going to be a con as well. NetSuite also has one of the deepest globalization capabilities for the mid-market companies that might be present in more than 5 to 10 or 15 different countries. And let's say if you are not operationally as deep, NetSuite could be a great product. The other strength for NetSuite is going to be its industry flavors. For example, for not-for-profit, for distribution, it has very deep WMS capabilities. So those are some of the pros of NetSuite. Now let's look at the weaknesses. So number one, the data model is not really as friendly for manufacturing. The product is very patchy because NetSuite has acquired a lot of different products overall, especially for the manufacturing centric functionality. Traditionally, NetSuite did not really have the manufacturing functionality. So overall, the flow, the product is going to feel very patchy and illogical for the industrial manufacturers and industrial distributors. The pricing and discounting capabilities are extremely limited for B2B companies, so it might not be the best felt for B2B companies. Having said that, NetSuite, again, is a very strong product for the mid-market companies, and that's why it ranks at number five on our list. <music> Number four on our list is the product called Sage X3. Sage X3 is targeted for the upper mid market companies. Uh, its strength is going to be it has very deep capabilities overall for the food and beverage, process centric verticals, as well as for the agriculture. The other strength Sage X3 is going to be it's designed from the CFO perspective. So it's going to have very rich multi entity supply chain uh, capabilities, as well as the financial capabilities that you are probably going to find in products such as Cispro or SAP. The weaknesses for Sage X3 is going to be, this is not really uh, a fit for the smaller manufacturing companies, especially when you talk about discrete manufacturing companies. And then the final weakness for the Sage X3 product is going to be, it's not going to have as deep industry 4.0 capabilities if you are very deep manufacturing company and you are looking for the perspective from the plant floor operator, then Sage X3 is not going to have that. Having said that, Sage X3 is a very strong mid-market product for the process manufacturing, food and beverage and agriculture companies. And that's why it ranks at number four on our list. <music> Deltech is targeted for the government contractors, the consulting companies, any companies that are going to have very deep project centric needs. And when I say project centric, it does not mean project manufacturing. Project manufacturing has very different processes than your project centric companies. So Deltech is going to be a great fit for the project centric government contractors that are going to require the project management capabilities and going to require the resource management capabilities that are going to be integrated with your project. It's also going to require the procurement capabilities as well as the accounting. But the project manufacturing goes through different process because in that you are also going to require the manufacturing capabilities. Deltech is not the right fit for the manufacturers or the distributor if your core business model is really the manufacturing and distribution. The other weaknesses for Deltech is going to be that its CRM capabilities are limited. So most likely you are going to be using some other CRM such as Salesforce. And then it's going to have extremely limited capabilities for the commercial organizations. So if your business model contains both commercial as well as government con, then uh, you are probably going to be struggling with Deltech. Having said that, Deltech is still a very strong product for the mid-market government contracting and the consulting companies. And that's why it ranks at number three on our list. Now, number two on our list is going to be the product called QAD. And QAD is targeted for upper mid automotive life sciences companies. And one of the strength of 
QED is going to be its deep supply chain capabilities and the perspective, especially when you talk about the vendor collaboration uh, and companies that are going to require very deep supply chain collaboration capabilities, very deep international compliance capabilities. That's where QED really shines. The other strength for QED is going to be its UX. It's very friendly overall in terms of the way it allows for the customization. So companies that care for the UX experience will find it far more attractive. The negative for QED is going to be its programming language is very legacy and the infrastructure that it utilizes is not the mainstream cloud providers. So you could have challenges there in finding the talent in issues with any sort of infrastructure issues if it is not going to be part of the mainstream cloud provider. And then it also has the weaker community compared to some of the other products uh, on this list. And then the QAD is not going to be as diverse as, for example, Microsoft Dynamics Business Central or Epicore Kinetic. QAD is still a very strong product for the upper mid manufacturing companies, automotive companies, as well as the life sciences companies. And that's the reason why it ranks at number two on our list. <music> Number one on our list is going to be the product called IFS. IFS is really strong with the service centric organization with the companies that are going to have very large assets that require servicing in the field. These are going to be your oil wells. These are going to be your tech companies, IT companies, and you are going to find IFS to be suitable in your airline ecosystem when you are going to be servicing those large aircraft. So MRO organizations are going to find it really attractive. The other strength for IFS is going to be, even though it is a legacy product, the interface is very cloud native. It has been re-architected for cloud experience. The weakness for IFS is going to be, it's not really a great fit for the manufacturing or distribution companies, even though it might have manufacturing capabilities, but it's not really designed from the perspective of manufacturing or distribution. The community is going to be very limited and the North American presence is going to be extremely limited as well for IFS. They have been trying to gain market share in the North American market, but it's overall limited. So that's it for the list. If you enjoyed this list, make sure you check the blog link that we are going to include as part of this video. And that is going to have far deeper analysis and far more details that if you need those, care for those, then, then please check it out. And make sure you check our podcast that is available on Apple, Spotify, as well as Google. And if you search for WBS Rocks, you can find on any of those channels. If you like it, make sure you are going to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the episodes that we publish on a weekly basis. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos. Make sure you guys post your comments and questions. Typically, we include your feedback in building these lists. So your feedback is going to be absolutely critical. On that note, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.